Welcome to Pop Workshop. Well, I continue to get questions about the keyhole slots. So in this video today, I want to be able to show you again, this is the keyhole slot right here that's used to be able to hang the plaques on the wall. Now, in some of the videos, I've used the CNC machine to be able to cut this. Also, in other videos, I've used the router table. Today, I want to use the router table to be able to cut this keyhole slot, and I want to show you exactly how I set it up to be able to do that effectively. So if you don't have a CNC machine, no big deal. You can still use the keyhole slots. So let's get started. If you'd like to help support this channel, please go to patreon.com slash workshop. And I want to thank all the Patreons that I have that do support this channel. And in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to cut a plaque like this for the keyhole slot on the back to be able to hang it on the wall securely. On this 20th anniversary of 9-11, this is a special plaque that I want to be able to hang on my wall to be able to remind me each and every day and everyone that sees the plaques on my wall that we will never forget what happened on 9-11-2001. A brief moment of silence to be able to reflect on that fateful day. This is what a keyhole bit looks like. And this is what will make the cut that round hole. And then it has the cutting surface along here also to be able to make that slot. On some bits, you have these little registration marks. The one that I typically use is this one right here. And I want to try to get that into the camera so that you can see it. That's the little registration mark. Now from this top edge of this bit down to this registration point is about a quarter of an inch. I typically use about a 0 0.25, 0 0.26 to be able to cut my keyhole slots. And what that does, it helps to establish this shoulder that you see right in here. That's what you're creating. I'm gonna color that so that you can see it. And that allows for that screw to go into that slot. And if I take a screw such as this, and that goes in, that shoulder holds it so that it's not gonna fall off the wall. So you wanna have this wall shoulder right here thick enough to be able to support the picture from being able to fall. So it doesn't need to be real thick. Now in today's video, when I actually cut it, the depth of cut that I made from here to here was actually 0.29 of an inch. And that's okay, that's not a problem at all. All that does is give just the shoulder a little bit thicker and that doesn't hurt anything. So it doesn't have to be exact, but you do have to be able to create that shoulder. Now here is another keyhole slot that does not have those registration marks on it. So you just need to be able to measure from the top surface down to uh, somewhere along in here. And remember, your shoulder depth is gonna be in this space right there. So I hope you can see that in the camera. And if I use the calipers to be able to measure that on this particular bit, I would want to come down again about 0 0.26, 0 0.28, and that would give me a real good shoulder to be able to have for a keyhole slot. Be anywhere in this range is going to be fine. To establish the height, I just use this flat ruler and be able to slide it over and touch that index mark. <laughs> Looks like I need to make some different type of measuring tool. And then I just tighten it down and I'm ready to be able to cut it. Now, one of the things that I definitely like to be able to do when I'm using the router table is to be able to do a test cut. So I took just a scrap piece of plywood and I actually cut the keyhole slot and then I can take a look at what it looks like and I can verify that the shoulder is going to be able to work. Now when I take the calipers and actually measure the depth of this, it actually is 0.35 of an inch. Now that will work, but it's still just a little bit deeper than what I want to be able to go. 
So from there, I'm just going to make a small adjustment on the height of that bit with the router table, and then I'll do one more test cut. Now, just so you know, when I'm using the CNC machine, I'll do the same thing. I'll do a test cut before I actually do the real project. It's just a little extra safety precaution that I like to do just to make sure that there's not going to be any problems. Now, after the second test cut, we take the depth, we measure it, and it's 0.29 of an inch. This is going to work just fine. Now that the depth is established at the 0.29 of an inch, the next thing I need to do is establish how long I want it and how far from the top that I want to be able to come down from that top portion. So the first thing I measured, the halfway point. Now this plaque is 10 and a half inches, so that's going to be five and a quarter. And I'm going to measure down about two and a half inches. And that's going to establish the center point. The next step, let's go ahead and adjust the fence. I want to set the fence up at the exact same thing. So from the center of the bit to the edge of the uh, fence itself is going to be the two and a half inches. The next thing I need to establish is how long it needs to be. And again, I'm going to measure from the center of the bit over to where the edge of the plaque will be. That actually establishes the center line. So I'm going to mark my line on the table check it out, and if I have the edge of that plaque on the line, then that bit is right dead center of it. Then from there, I'm going to measure over three quarters of an inch to the right and to the left of that line. That will establish the keyhole slot that's an inch and a half long. So this is the center line. This is the edge of the plaque. So what I have to do is start at this point, work across to this line, once I reach this line, that is the end of the keyhole slot. And then I back up to this point again and then exit out. So this is the instructions right here on exactly how to do the keyhole slot. Now, one of the things that I could do instead of just using the line as a reference, I could put a stop block in there and then run the plaque over until it hits and come back. But because it's only one, the line works just fine. And that was a good reference point. So this gives you an alternative way to be able to do the keyhole slots using these lines drawn out on your table versus using just a stop block. Now, just like doing the CNC machine, this goes very quick. Now with the router running, I take the plaque above the router bit and push it straight down with the edge of that uh, plaque right on my line. When I have it all the way down, then I can move it to the left and work my way over to that second line. That is the end point. Once that's done, I'm going to move back to the right and be able to exit out. So this whole process literally takes just a few seconds to be able to do but the results are very good. So there is the keyhole slot finished. Now the last element that I want to add to this is put my logo right across here. Now I have this not to deal with. I'm not going to take the time to fill it. I'm just going to put my logo right above it. Now to be able to add the logo, I'm going to use the Box Alien 20 watt laser to be able to do this. The first thing, the uh, size of this plaque again is 10 and a half so I'm going to mark this center at five and a quarter. From there I need to make sure that this is uh, square to my table. So I needed to raise up that laser just a little bit and I'm going to pull it down to get it real close to where it needs to be. Now the little trick that I do to be able to make sure that it's square I just take that scrap piece of wood slide it in right against the feet on the laser and then I can take a square and put it against that piece of wood and then there I can just line up the uh, project and be able to have it square. Now I'm going to take my 30 millimeter spacer and set the Z height and with all of that done then I can turn the laser on and go ahead and open up the light burn software. I know a number of people have said that 
when they turn on the light burn, it doesn't recognize the machine. The trick that I have found, turn the machine on first, then open up light burn. And when you do that, I have always had immediately that the machine is recognized and you're ready to be able to engrave. At this point, I'll go over to the file, click on the file, go to my recent projects, and I can pull up my logo. Now it's very small. By clicking this little dotted box right there, it brings it up and fits it into the window so that you can see it easily. The other thing I want to do is I want this to be a little bit darker. The front side on We Will Never Forget plaque is actually done quite dark. So I'm going to actually slow this down to about 70 inches per minute. I'm going to go ahead and leave the power at 70%. That should work out real well. I will be using the Air Assist. And with these settings done, then I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. And I'm ready to be able to start the engraving. Out of abundance of caution, I always like to come down to the Move window. Click on the Fire button. That way I can verify that I'm right on my center point that I had established earlier. Once I know that is correct, I could at this point just go ahead and hit start, but I want to take one step further and actually frame this. I want to make sure that I don't interfere with that knot. And you can see how this is being framed. The logo will fit right above the knot. I don't have to worry. So now I'm going to hit start and we'll be ready to engrave. And please, by all means, remember to grab those glasses and wear the glasses anytime that the laser is operating. One of the things that I really like about this laser is that it is lightweight, it's very quiet, and I can store this on a shelf that I have right outside of the shop, and whenever I'm ready to use it, I can just grab it and put this on the workbench. And that way it's not taking up space in the shop, and yet it's very easily to be able to grab it, set it on the workbench, do the particular job, and then put it back away and store it on a shelf. Now once this is completed, I can just take and slide this out of the way. I don't need to really worry about uh, anything else. I can just push this with my hands and slide the gantry out of the way and be able to remove the project. I'm glad that I did this project to be able to remember what took place 20 years ago on 9-11-2001. I hope that all of us never forget what happened on that fateful day. My last step that I'm going to do is put this screw in the wall, put this plaque hanging next to my other plaques so it will remind me each and every day when I come into the shop what this wall represents. I on purpose engraved this much darker if you'll recall, this was done at about um, 80 inches per minute with about 80% power and it engraved it very dark. And if you'll recall from the previous videos, the other plaques that I had done, I had actually tested different settings. Some were a little bit darker than others, but for the most part, every single one of these are considerably lighter than this special plaque that I did on this special date. So if you like this video and what it represents, please hit that like button so that all of us will never forget. And by all means, please take the time while you're there, subscribe and hit the little notification. Again, I wanna thank everyone for watching the videos today and I look forward to seeing you in the next project that I'm doing, whatever that may be.